Hello everybody, this is HG Shapes here. I'm back with another video. Hope this video finds you well and in good health or quickly recovering. Uh, first of all, sorry the video didn't make it out yesterday. Uh, was just uh, not feeling so great after our second dose of the COVID vaccine. And so I thought, eh, let's just wait 20, 24 more hours. And let's see if I start to feel better today. And fortunately I do feel a bit better. And um, well, it's just shaving, right? So it can probably wait a day. Um, today I have kind of a I guess you would call classic shave by my standards in terms of, uh, well, it's gear that I, um, or sorts of gear that I typically show on this channel. And so let's start with the razor. This is a made in English, <laughs> made in English, made in England, um, Gillette tech. It's got the, this is one of the later models. You can tell it's later when they put the, uh, brand on the top there. And this one is basically the, cousin, the British cousin to the American post-war tech, and um, that it's got the oval base uh, lather slots on the base plate, and it's got the diamond imprint in the middle. Um, this razor was re recommended to me by a friend who just couldn't stop talking about how much he loved it. This was his favorite tech, and the reason why he loved it so much is because this uh, handle is not hollowed out. It's a solid handle, and so this all put together on an, on original parts now, of course, on an original parts. This is the heaviest tech they ever made. This is about 62 grams, I want to say. And other techs, more average, maybe around 50 grams, and they can be even lighter depending on the materials used. And so um, I definitely wanted to try this right out for myself because it does, you know, it is unique and it's the heaviest. And so we'll be talking more about that. Um, today we're going to be using a Kai blade in it, which is also recommended um, by the same person. Uh, I think Sharp Blade in general is a good recommendation for these mild techs, uh, Paul Silver, Feather, Kai. I had never used Kai before, uh, and so I also want to thank the person that sent me a few Kai blades to try out um, in this uh, razor and, you know, mild techs in the future. Um, it did come originally in this case right here, a little plastic one. Uh, the set is called number 24. This is a number 24 set if you want to look it up. Um, definitely not the most expensive tech set by any imagination, but it opens up like that. You drop your razor in and there you go. Um, the same razor was also sold in kind of a red case called the number 45. I have one of those coming in soon. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty striking color red. Um, it's not bright red, it's more like a, a maroonish color, but that's also a very nice set, more substantial than that case for sure. All right, and for the soap today, I uh, decided let's start putting uses on some soaps that I own that don't have uh, much left to them. Um, this one has the tiniest little uh, circle of death here in the middle. And so I thought, eh, let's try to put some uses on this. Maybe later this year, I'll fully commit to using this for, you know, weeks and weeks and try to get rid of it. Um, so Summer Break Soaps Bell Ringer. Um, this is a bright, sweet citrus kind of scent. Really perfect for summertime. And so in light of the warm weather we had kind of starting last week, now it's kind of springy and rainy again. But I uh, thought, you know, why not bring this out? And so this is their most recent uh, soap base, which has, you know, it's a tallow based soap and has uh, lots of good uh, soap ingredients. And then uh, for the brush today, we are going to be using one that I haven't used in quite a while, but um, I have three days growth today. And for me, when you have more growth than you usually do and you're about to shave, why not break out a scrubby brush? And so in that case, I'm gonna be using this uh, Dogwood Handcrafts handle with the Decoration B3. Huge knot, kind of reminds me of the Simpsons Chubby 3, uh, best badger knot, uh, except this one's a bit denser. But other than that, they feel very similar. Um, and so, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, working this in and um, getting some scrub going. Um, I have used this earlier this week, but um, especially today with the three days growth, I think this will be wonderful. So we're gonna go ahead and start loading the soap here. Um, definitely gonna be loading it like we hate it or as another YouTuber likes to say, um, load it like there's no tomorrow. I like that one. Um, so yeah, I, you know, again, as I said, this is kind of a very classic shave for me. Um, I didn't especially feel like doing, you know, actually, I guess I've reviewed everything that I'm gonna be talking about today, except for the tech and the uh, one part of the post shave, which I'll keep a surprise for later. Um, I mean, that being said, though, these, you know, vintage razors, they are more similar than different. And so I have reviewed other English techs on this channel before. And is this tech that much different? 
No, but is there something to be said about the weight of it? Perhaps I could, I could maybe be convinced of that. You know, weight is something that, um, if you put two razors side by side, one significantly heavier than the other, I think it's hard to not notice a difference. You know, could you adjust to maybe compensate for weight things? Sure. But I think kind of, um, that, you know, the natural weight of it in general is going to have some kind of impact, you know? So we're just loading the soap here. And, um, so far, uh, it's been really great to work with this base again. Actually, I just used it, um, I guess last week, right? With the Mountain Laurel set, because it's uh, the Summer Break uh, soap base. And by the way, regarding that, I haven't heard from the winner, Chris Simpson. So Chris, if you're watching this, please send me an email with your info so I can send you that set. Or if any of y'all know Chris, <laughs> can you uh, send him a message for me and um, tell him that I'm looking for him? Um, I'm gonna give him until next week, whenever I post my next video. And then if I don't hear from him by then, I'm just gonna pick somebody else. Um, so FYI, okay, that's going to be good on the soap. I imagine, um, I'm going to wet the face here. And let's get into our face lather. I'm going to put a little dribble of water on top of the brush here, just because I didn't add any during the loading process. And yeah, I think even thanks to the three days growth, this brush is actually feeling less scrubby than usual because, well, my, my, my beard is like protecting me <laughs> from the scrub. So the scent strength on this is pretty good. I would say at least six out of 10, maybe seven out of 10, you know, above medium. And I think partially that has to do with the notes. You know, it's got mango, sugar, a little bit of must to kind of uh, round it out. But it is kind of a mm, bright scent. You know, it's a little bit hard to miss in that way. But yeah, this uh, towel base from Summer Break, uh, I've definitely appreciated the ease of use with this soap and also with um, Mount Laurel. And so as you can see, without doing much, just kind of scrubbing with the brush and painting a little bit, um, we've already got some semblance of a lather here, but um, we've got a drop going. I'm, I'm going to keep working this in and I'll uh, bring you back in when I'm about to start the first pass. All right, we're back and the summer break base, um, nice and, uh, uh, well, it created a wet lather uh, without any uh, issues. And um, I just got a haircut, so I'm gonna be doing my best to line up the sideburns on my own here. And here we go, first pass with the Gillette Tech. This Kai has, uh, I think five uses on it, six uses, something like that. So hopefully with this video today as well, I can show how even if you have something like three days growth, um, you don't need to bring out an aggressive razor to have an effective shave, um, which for somebody like me who prefers the mild razors kind of begs the question, you know, if I can get a good uh, shave, close shave with the tech on multiple days growth, then why do I need to use an aggressive, more efficient razor really ever, you know, because for the day-to-day -day 
shaving. Of course, I'll prefer something a bit more mild. Um, but before I've kind of used the logic with myself of, oh, well, you know, if I have a bunch of days growth, maybe I need something more aggressive, more efficient, but I'm realizing that maybe that's just not true. Lather is falling off the razor, which is a good thing by my standards. Means that I've put in the right amount of water. Okay. <laughs> that one went off to the side a little bit. We're going to go ahead and rinse this side. <laughs> Need to adopt the... Uh, Michael Friedberg rinsing method. Is it him? I think it is. There's there's somebody who, when they use a yeah, I, I think that's being right. Anyway, when they do a video and they're shaving with a the DE, they'll they'll rinse after each side, and so then when they bring it out of the water, people don't realize that they've also flipped it. <laughs> and so they tell him, hey man, you're not using both sides of the razor. And it's like, yes, I am. I'm just rinsing after each one because it's kind of gross. It is. So I'm definitely trying to ride the cap, this razor as much as I can. Um, I'm not sure, you know, that's been kind of my default tech angle to try to ride the cap, but I know when some people use like aggressive razors, they're like, right, the cap, it'll make it feel less harsh. But then with this razor, is it increasing the efficiency? Because you don't necessarily want to make it more mild, right? To be honest, I'm not really quite sure what it's doing in this case, but I know it feels more comfortable than when I tilt the handle down more. All right, first pass complete. I'm going to rinse and bring it back in for pass number two. Pass number two. All right, pass number two across the grain mostly.
Second pass complete there. Um, very nice, right? Reminding me of some kind of fundamental shaving things, right? Let the razor do the work more. That's not the best expression, but light, light pressure. Um, don't push down too hard. Mind your angles going around curved areas, things like that. And anyway, I'll uh, talk about that more here. Uh, upcoming, the third pass, just a second. Third pass. All right, here we go with the third pass against the grain mostly. So as I was saying about the second pass there, reminded me of some fundamental shaving things and probably came to mind because believe it or not, I, I did have a little bit of irritation from, from using this razor eh, maybe once or twice this week. Not like major nicks or anything like that, but I think I was just doing stuff like pressing too hard, not adjusting my angle when going over a curved area or something like that. And so, you know, it's just, uh, I just mentioned it because as a reminder, even with a vintage razor that's relatively lightweight by modern standards, um, you still have to keep those things in mind. And um, I also, kind of because of the couple days of irritation I had, kind of uh, after a couple days into the week, I did start using alum after each shave, and that's kind of the surprise post-shave thing that I'll be talking about. Um, after I finish this pass. Um, you know, going against the grain, this razor I think is pretty smooth. I think text in general, particularly smooth going against the grain. It's hard for me to say if it's more smooth than like my beloved flat bottom tech, but um, yeah, I just haven't used that one in a while. Um, I guess we'll go the other way here. I know that area right there is difficult for a lot of people. Um, I've decided that basically I'll just go across both ways and then I'll get right under the nose going against. So that's really the only part I go against on. That area right there is maybe even worse for me. And so I've just conceded <laughs> and I basically do a, um, what some straight razors, some straight razor shavers would call a dummy pass where I just go the same way each time. Um, This part's always felt comfortable. Well, maybe not always, but the past few months, definitely, it's felt comfortable to go against the grain like that. And now we're just gonna feel around for any touch-ups, man. Actually did very well in this part. Usually I always have a little bit here under my jaw, but perhaps it's because I was doing the skin stretching, which you maybe notice, I think most of us could stand to do more of that. Um, same thing here, usually I have quite a bit 
Hmm, might be onto something there. I need to pick up the jaw each time and maybe hold down here when I go under, because that really provided a good result. I have a little bit right here, which is normal, but maybe a little bit less than usual. Huh. It feels very smooth. Um, kind of surprisingly so. <laughs> and I say it's surprising because I, I mean, maybe it's just because I've been doing two passes all week and also have been shaving off three days growth. But um, yeah, wow, really terrific shave. Um, I think what I'll do now is I'll get right into the Allen uh, part with you all. So at this point, what I'll do, I'm gonna rinse the razor, obviously. And then I always do a cold water rinse. So I'll, I'll do that now. The post-shave feeling on the soap is really nice and in between passes too. Um, felt like the soap was doing a really good job. I feel I have a little, a little maybe weeper or nick or something right here. Um, probably will be more noticeable once I do this alum. So let me preface this by saying alum is probably overrepresented in the beginning stages of when you find this way of shaving. People say you got to use alum. That's obviously not true. Um, if you don't like alum, that's fine. Um, I was used to, again, probably because of its overrepresentation in the beginning, I, I, I used to use this all the time. And then now, um, I haven't, I haven't really used it in a while. I thought, well, let's revisit it again. So you, you know, cold water, go like this. No stinging there. No stinging there. A little right there. Really good under there. Have one there, and then I bet I'm gonna feel one here. Yeah. So, after you do this, what I like to do is I let it sit for a minute. Make sure you rinse your alum, let it dry out. Um, I like to let this sit for a minute. Um, and so while I do that, I will like start cleaning up my gear. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll cut you back in. Okay, so it's been a minute, so now I'm gonna rinse the alum. You can use cold or warm, I guess, depending on what your preference is. And basically every season here, I just go for the cold. I don't see the need, need for warm. And yeah, so the benefit, it definitely feels you leaving kind of squeaky clean. Um, that's how I feel um, after I use this. And we'll also, you know, uh, close up any small nicks you have, which if you're then gonna apply an alcohol splash, you won't feel the burn as much because I figured that the alum just kind of seals that up. And so that being said, um, do you really need alum if you're going to use alcohol? Probably not because the alcohol will clear up your things. But for me, if I'm going to use something like a balm, which doesn't have alcohol in it, um, I can see the benefit of um, uh, using the alum first to do its astringent things, and then you get to put on the balm. So I'm going to put on the balm now. Um, the Zingari Unscented, which I've been using for a year and a half now, and just really nice product. And I think we're about halfway through this bottle. I happen to have the older non Sego balm, so it doesn't have tallow in it. But even in the winter here, if I feel like I need a little more, I'll just put on a little more. So um, there you go, there's my alum. <laughs> and balm spiel. Um, for the alum, I forgot to mention, this is um, Osma alum, I believe how it's pronounced, O-S-M-A. And it, it really is much better than whatever alum you buy for a dollar on Amazon. Um, you can, I, I could feel the high quality of it. Um, so supposedly it's cut from a bigger thing of alum instead of the way the cheaper ones are made, which is where they pour it into molds to get that shape. This is actually cut from a huge block. So maybe that's a marketing gimmick, but it feels like a higher quality to me. Okay, final recap here, and then I'll set everybody free here. Um, Dogwood Handcraft Handle, Decoration Grooming B3. I've rinsed it out now, so uh, you can see kind of what it looks like after it's been used. Huge knot, um, perfect for this kind of shave, and 
whipped up a really good lather. Um, I was I was pleased with that. The Gillette Tech number 24, you can also see it as the number 45. And um, yeah, if you're looking for the razor itself, it just basically looks like an oval slot American Tech, but um, it's made in England. Uh, nice razor. And then we used alum and the Zingari Bomb. And then we used Summer Break Bell Ringer. Um, yeah, beautiful scent, great lather, um, nice uh, rinsing feeling in between passes, and also at the end, the post shave um, felt very nice. Um, okay, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, we're going to be we're going to be continuing on the mild razor theme next week. Someone has kindly sent me a carved stainless razor with the A and double A plates, so I'll be looking forward to using those next week. Um, seeing how that treats me because I've never used those mild plates with a carve, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. This, uh, for now, this has been HG Shaves. See you next time. Goodbye.